my channel and in today's video I am going to be turning this piece of trash into art. Actually it's not quite trash but they were throwing it out at work. This fish was at the edge of one of a CY box at work and by CY we mean picture book boxes and they dismantled quite a few of them because they bought some new ones and this is what it looked like and I was like hmm I'm gonna take one of these fish home and paint on it because that's a fun idea it was fun taking it on the bus no one asked me any strange questions or no one sat by me either so that was good um yeah so I decided it would be good to paint something on this so first of all I had to peel off the bits of vinyl and some children had already started that process for me so that was good and I sanded it down too just so that the gesso would have something to grip onto and just to smooth out all of the bits that had stickers on and just to make it a nice smooth surface really and once I had sanded it down I used some gesso just to prime the area gave it a few coats I was a little bit impatient with getting the gesso to dry I kept trying to do another coat before it was dry you gotta let your gesso dry before you do another coat so I did use my hairdryer to speed up the process but yeah eventually the surface was completely gessoed as you can see it has now gone from orange to white and even after days after I sanded it down I was still finding the orange dust everywhere so that was fun it was like I had Watsits or Cheetos all over my living room so once I had gessoed the surface I decided to draw out my design onto the fish. There's me just making sure the gesso was dry. It wasn't, so I had to wait a bit longer. I drew the design onto the fish first and I decided that I wanted to do a sort of aquarium scene, semi-realistic aquarium scene because it's a fish shape. So I painted fish on it and corals. And this took me so, so long. When I was editing this, I had about, about, 11 hours 11 12 hours of footage so yeah that that was a long time that was a lot of editing a lot of clips to transfer so this is probably one of my biggest projects video wise i have ever done and i'm really pleased that it, i spent my time on it because the end result is something i'm actually quite proud of and i hope you guys like it too but there are some stages of this evolution if you like that look a little bit muddy a little bit unfinished but you just have to bear with it and also this was very tricky to film because I had to take over my living room again like I did with my jellyfish painting well I'll leave a card to that so you can see again the devastation in my living room I took over my living room and because it took so long it took over a week to spend time on it to get it all done my living room was completely devastated and might have got a little bit of acrylic paint on the carpet. So this is definitely my biggest, most ambitious project yet. So I'm using acrylic paint because that's the paint that I use. I don't use oil paint. I'm not even sure you can use oil paint on wood. Never used oil paint, so I wouldn't know. I used acrylic paint and again, I did it in layers. And to get the texture of the coral, I first of all use the other side of the brush because you can use both sides of a paintbrush to get different textures. Can't really paint large areas with the other side of the brush, but you can do spotting or stippling with the back of the brush. So that's what I did. And I also invested in a nice set of paint pens. They are not Posca pens because I didn't want to buy Posca pens just for this I wanted to buy more colors for a cheaper price so I got some off Amazon and they're pretty good they are 0.7 they're pretty much the same as Posca pens they're acrylic pens and this these worked really really well for the texture of the coral so the corals and the fish in this painting are Kind of loosely based off of real ones i don't know the names of two of the fish that i based my fish on but i do know that i did do a clownfish because i know what they look like because they look like nemo and the clownfish is probably my favorite part of this i just think it looks really cool and you can tell that it's clownfish so that was good and here i am doing the stippling effect with the end of the paintbrush 
that's quite frustrating because you do have to keep dipping the paintbrush into paint more than you would do if you were using the brush end and you can get quite a lot of paint clogged up quite quickly but it's a good way of getting texture and again I did it for this coral that I'm doing here I did a base in yellows and browns and then once it had dried once I'd waited for it to dry like a patient person that I am I went over the top of it with some paint pens and the back of the paintbrush too and this yellow coral I think was the biggest struggle because trying to get the shadows right because I was using references but I was compiling lots of different references together and putting fish over the top of them where there weren't fish in the reference picture. It was quite difficult to actually get the shading right and here is an example of a bit of the muddy and a bit of a first layer image of the painting and the frustrations of wanting to get the painting finished but having to wait for some layers to dry otherwise it will just become more muddy and this was my frustration so much with this piece I'm just not very patient at all when it comes to painting and it's the reason why I can't do watercolour but I was really proud of myself that I did spend a long time on this video and on this painting to make sure that the layers dried and it did look as best as I could make it and I didn't rush that's the one thing I can say about this project I didn't rush it and to me that's an achievement so if you are new to my channel welcome my name is Katie I make art videos not all of my videos are on this larger scale but I do have some more painting videos I tried to paint with a beauty blender recently and I painted a jellyfish apparently I like painting sea things so go and have a look at my channel I've got some tips on how to use acrylic paint if you are interested I don't have any oil painting videos because I don't do oil painting but I have various other videos challenges speed paints other playlists all that kind of thing so do have a look at my channel and do feel free to subscribe and leave me a comment down below let me know what you think of this piece and whether you have tried something similar whether you've painted on wood or what's the craziest thing you've ever painted on do let me know I'd quite like to know that yeah question of the day what's the craziest thing you've ever painted on and if you like this video you know emotionally please do leave it a like down below as that really does help me out so now the coral is really starting to come to life and these paint pens were actually a real lifesaver in this piece and I'm really really glad that I bought them and I do really think they work really really well and they just have transformed this coral and yeah I just really like how they are and I will be using them again in future products I want to start customizing some things I have another pair of shoes that I'd quite like to customize so I'll probably use the paint pens for that because they are really really cool and here is the fish on top of the coral I don't know what type of fish it is I just did it in a turquoisey bluey hint of yellowy colors and again this was a bit of a struggle getting the lighting and the shadows right for this one because as I had it it was two different references it was a reference of this fish and a reference of the coral and putting them together was was quite tricky it's quite hard work so this piece has really inspired me to do more painting and to try doing slightly bigger scale projects because normally I'm used to drawing on about A4, sometimes A5 size, sometimes slightly bigger canvases but this is probably the biggest canvas I've painted at home and it's really inspired me to start being a bit more creative and going a bit bigger with my art although I don't really have the space to do it I like I said I've been using my living room and finally I have my living room back so that's nice but I do really want to challenge myself a bit more and paint a bit more on a larger scale because painting on a larger scale is a lot easier and it's a lot easier to get details in and it's easier to blend it's just much better to paint on a larger scale but I'm not going to do that for a little bit because I do quite like having my living room so maybe the next video I'll upload will be painting on the tiniest canvas you've ever seen just just for a little bit of a change so here is the clownfish and I think this is my favorite it was quite nice and therapeutic to paint all the orange and red tones and to blend them in I used a bit of brown in the shading and I added some of the Prussian blue from the outside because it was a Prussian blue which I used for the darker tones of the water and darker tones in the coral and I used that in the edge of the fins and the eye because you know that I love using Prussian blue to shade and to make 
dark tones and yeah yeah I did use quite a lot of Prussian blue in this painting not because there's a lot of it on the page but because I was kept having to re-blend out the fish shape and I did almost go back to the beauty blender because the beauty blender was actually really good at blending two colours together So now I am painting the coral in the top right hand corner and this is probably one of my favourites of the corals because it just looks really really sparkly and like it's moving even though it's not moving because it's a painting, not really making much sense but I do think I did manage to get a bit of movement in this piece even though it's a static painting. And again I'm using the other end of my brush to get this the dotted effect and the paint pens and here is a bit of a bit of a jump in time here but you can see what I mean and yeah I think it just looks really really sparkly and I really really like it. So now we're moving on to one of the more boring of the corals. It doesn't have a lot of texture on it, it's just a bit of shadow and I did it yellow to kind of balance out the yellow coral on the other side and not really too much to say about this one. It was just a lot of layering. I don't have so much footage of this one because it was a little bit boring compared to the rest but I did try really hard to choose my colours to balance out. If you see what I mean, I used pink corals opposite each other, yellow corals opposite each other. The fish I tried to have a bit of variation in colour just to bring the whole piece together really. I did try and think about positioning and colours although I didn't plan out what I was doing at all I just went straight onto the fish. I'm not very good at planning things I just go for it and I think that can be good sometimes but maybe I could have chosen some slightly better colours and I could have planned it a little bit better. I could have done some sketches first but I didn't I just went straight onto the fish because I'm impatient as you all know. So the final fish on this painting, again I don't know what it is, what I based it off, it's just purple and yellow because I thought that was a pretty one so that's what we're doing and yeah a bit of a funny angle here but I was having to move the camera all over this fish and try and get different angles and different close-ups so sorry about that but it does mean that you do get a big reveal at the end you don't have the whole thing you don't see the whole thing unfolding you see bits of it so you do have to watch to the end to see to see how it turns out and I'm sure you're all very very excited you should be excited <laughs> so anyway this is the last fish that I'm doing again took many layers I used the paint pen I did end up doing quite a few stippling slash dotted dotting effect on this but then I painted over it because I thought there was a bit too much but then I added it in again but that is the beauty of acrylic paint it is opaque that is why I love it so much it dries quickly and it's opaque so here I am adding some of the stippling effect and in a minute you'll see that it's completely gone and I decided to do it a little bit differently but I do really like the colours of this fish, I think it complements the rest of them quite nicely and I did, this is the only fish that I used it on, the only place I used it on, I used a bit of white gel pen just to add some of the strokes onto the fins and to get the opaqueness properly. But yeah, I really shouldn't have done that but I did it anyway. So finally, we're getting to the end now, getting to the big reveal, I decided to add some bubbles because bubbles are fun it's sea it's an aquarium scene and I thought that would be a nice idea and a nice finishing touch so I used a circle stencil to draw some bubbles and then I drew it with a blue color pencil and then I went around the outside most of it but not all of it if you see what I mean I did three lines around the outside with a light blue and then a white as well if that makes sense I hope it makes sense yeah so just to add a little bit more movement because I did want it to look like there was some movement in this piece because oceans move I guess. I'm kind of running out of things to say now I hope you hadn't noticed. This has been a long edit, it's been a long project and I'm so excited to upload this video so we are coming to the end now. Just a few more seconds of bubbles and now we can go to the before and after shot. So here is how the fish looked before and here it is once it's done. I'm so pleased with how this turned out. I'm really, really proud of how long it took me. 
I mean, it's not the best thing ever, but I do think it's a bit of an improvement. And I just love how all the fish turned out and how all the corals turned out. So that is all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and listening to me rambling. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.